Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. I make tile videos. So today I am bringing you a video on a product that probably needs no introduction. And that product is Flex Seal. Now you've probably seen Flex Seal from the commercials, the one that stands out to me of him making a boat with a screen door as the bottom of the boat, coats it in Flex Seal, and paddles his way across a lake in a video. And I think that kind of marketing just has really stuck with me. I've always thought it was a neat commercial, neat product. And so I've always thought kind of in the back of my mind, like, would this work for a tiled shower? If it's waterproof, we have all these different waterproofing products. We got Red Guard, we got Schluter Systems, they're Curdy. We got uh, different types of waterproofing. And if this Flex Seal can float a boat, uh, why couldn't you build a tiled shower out of it? And then in one of my videos that I made a few months ago, uh, I was tearing apart a shower and diagnosing how this shower had failed. And I came across a really interesting product that they had used to waterproof the shower. And that was window flashing. And they actually used window flashing to waterproof the shower pan and the bench. Uh, that shower failed, it, but it got the wheels turning on alternative products, products that might be uh, more available to homeowners or products that you can find at a hardware store or even order online. So in that video, I posed the question. I just, you know, I said, leave it in the comment section below. What do you think if I were to build a shower out of Flex Seal? Would you like to see it? And the response was overwhelming. I got so many comments that people wanted to see me build a shower out of Flex Seal. But before I was going to go ahead and do that, I wanted obviously to test the product like I put the other waterproofing products through testing. So what I did was first off, I wanted to see how the Flex Seal adhered to the different types of common substrates that we see in a tiled shower application. And that was uh, plywood, it, drywall, hardy backer, foam board, I'm probably missing some, but I wanted to see how the Flex Seal liquid itself adhered to those substrates. And what I found was that the Flex Seal bonded really well to all of these substrates, uh, except for the PVC that I tried. It didn't bond very well. It kind of just flaked off real easy and I was able to peel that Flex Seal right off of the PVC. But when I read the instructions on the Flex Seal, it said to sand the surface beforehand. And so once I sanded that PVC uh, bonding flange drain, and actually that's what it was, it was a laticrete bonding flange drain. Once I sanded it and then applied the Flex Seal, it actually held up really well and it didn't come off when I tried to peel it off. So I found that the Flex Seal bonds to these surfaces really well. So the next thing to do was to test it for waterproofness. So what I did was I built a box out of drywall and screws and I didn't use any sealant to make the box because I didn't want that to interfere with the test. Uh, so I just screwed pieces of drywall together to make a box. I used Laticrete's waterproofing fabric in the corners to reinforce all the corners because Anytime I use a liquid membrane, I like to use that fabric to reinforce the corners. And I did two coats of the Flex Seal and let that dry for 24 hours. The next day, I came back and I filled up that box, uh, filled it up with water, and then I observed it for the next 14 days. Over those 14 days, I regularly checked up on it and I saw no evidence of leaking. It looked like it was holding the water really well. So at the end of 14 days, I thought that was a good test. That's similar to some of the other testing I've done uh, as far as testing products for waterproof shower pans. And I drained, so I drained the box and dried it out real well, not to cause any issues with the test sample. And then I tore the box apart just to make sure that no water had creeped into any areas that I couldn't see from the outside of the box. And sure enough, everything was bone dry inside of it. The Flex Seal bonded really well to the drywall. It just peeled the top layer of the drywall off down to the brown paper. And also what I noticed with the Flex Seal as I was tearing it apart, that it was a very durable type of membrane. It was very stretchy. 
and when it was embedded with the waterproofing fabric, I could not tear it apart. It was very strong, and so I was convinced that this would make a proper shower pan, that in lieu of maybe a pan liner or a hot mop, this product would work. So that's the first part of the testing that I did. I found out that it would stick to the common substrates that we need it to stick to, and B, that under a 14-day water test, it would hold up with no leaks. So that's a win-win for both parts of the first test. So also what I needed to find out was now that it holds water, how are we gonna adhere tile to it? Will it work like a red guard or a hydro band where we can bond tile directly to it? Say you wanna waterproof a curb, can you adhere tile to it? Uh, a couple things that I tried first off was, of course, the most common adhesive we use in a tiled shower is thinset mortar. And I wanted to use the best thinset mortar that I could think of. And I have a viewer, Dave, who always wants me to try Customs Megalite. So I figured, hey, let's kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to try Customs Megalite for Dave. And I'm also going to use a really high quality modified thin set to see if I can stick tiles to the flex seal. Well, what I found was that once the thin set cured, it did not stick to the flex seal hardly at all. I mean, I could just take um, a margin trowel or a little screwdriver and it would pop the tiles right off of the flex seal. So that wasn't good. I knew that wouldn't work if we wanted a bond tile to it. So I also tried silicone. And what I found with silicone is that it bonded very well. So well, in fact, that I was chipping tiles as I was trying to pry them off of the flex seal. So now I knew that silicone would work, thin set would not, but using silicone in a tile application that is not practical so i was thinking so what can i use to bond tile to flex seal and i thought you know i know that they have this flex paste so i said why not i'm going to order up some flex paste which is it's also in the flex seal family and it's a consistency that i know you could trowel it and it really does have a consistency similar to like a mastic it just has a nice trowelable consistency and on the flex seal itself it says it bonds to ceramic tile so i figured hey let me figure out if i can adhere tile directly to the flex seal with flex seal paste as an adhesive and so i'm thinking well um, I need to test this against a control sample of something that we would typically use. So what I did is I made a control sample of just thin set mortar tile on hardy backer and then I made a sample of flex seal on hardy backer and using the flex paste to adhere the tile to it. So then after I let those cure for 48 hours. I used a tensile strength tester that I've used on other jobs. And so what tensile strength testing does is it tests the amount of pressure to pull two surfaces apart. So unlike shear testing, which is testing the shear strength, it's actually testing the pull off strength, which I figured was a great test to compare and see how this actually held up. So what I found was is that as I was doing the tensile strength test and I was pulling the tile sample away from the substrate, the hardy backer actually broke bond from itself, it delaminated before the tile delaminated from the flex seal. So the weak link at 100 PSI, and that's when it popped was 100 PSI, was the hardy backer actually delaminated. So I'm thinking, well, that's pretty good because if um, hardy backer delaminates at 100, that should be well enough tensile strength to hold up in a shower tile installation. So I did the control sample as well. The tile with the Megalite thin set on the hardy backer, same thing at 100 PSI. The hardy backer delaminated the layers of the hardy backer delaminated at 100 psi so i felt that even though i didn't know if the flex seal bonded better than thin set to hardy backer 
I didn't really need to find that out because I knew that it was stronger than the bond of Hardy Backer to itself. So I figured, hey, that's a win. I know that the Flex Seal is going to be strong enough to hold up in a tiled shower installation. So hey, so now that I know that A, Flex Seal will stick to common building substrates such as plywood, tile board, foam board, Hardy Backer, PVC, and I know that I can get tile to stick to the Flex Seal with a product in the same family of the Flex Seal. Uh, now the question lies, would I actually use it on a real job? Now that's a great question. What do you think? Is this something that you would use on a real job now that you've seen my testing? Would you trust it? And if so, leave it in the comment section below and let me know if you would use it or if you wouldn't use it, uh, leave that comment down there too. I'd love to hear it. And if you would like to see me actually use this on a regular job, let me know because I think that would make a really cool video as well. Now that I've done the testing, I do trust it. Anyways, I thought this was a really cool video to at least find out if it works. Again, if you want to see me do an actual build on an actual job, I want to hear about it. If you think I shouldn't, if you say no way, leave that comment as well. And please support our channel. I don't get paid. I'm not paid by Flex Seal. I do these videos for fun. I do them for your education so you learn about these products. If you want to support our channel, please go to tilecoach.com, buy a shirt or a hat, or you can find these flow effects drains that we use on all of our projects on our website for sale. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, last but not least, I love you. I love being your tile coach, and we'll see you on the next video.